Hello, my name is Robin, and I'm here to make your work in DaVinci Resolve that little bit easier, more pleasant, and efficient. And today I have a special video because I have programmed a solution to a common problem that otherwise Resolve cannot really help us with. So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to first explain what the problem is, I'll show you the standard solution in DaVinci Resolve and explain why that's not always the best approach, and then I will show you my solution, which involves um, a program script which you can download and freely use. So here's the problem. Have you ever had a timeline, which could be one or more clips, or I've just got one clip, and I have markers where I want to divide it up into separate files? Say I want one here as well at the Venus flytrap. The standard solution is to tap I on the first marker and O on the second marker to define a range that will be exported. And then we can give that a name. Uh, I'm going to call it, say, red circle. And we can add that to our render queue like that. And then we go to the second region that we want to export. And these are nicely predefined with markers. That's, of course, the smart way of doing it. I'll tap I here, and I'll tap O here. So I have another region. And now I need to go up here, and I will say red cells this time. Add to render queue. OK, and then let's say I want the fly trap part. So we'll go here, input, go to the end, output, define a region. Uh, call that fly trap add that to the render queue. And then I've got uh, three portions of the video, each with exactly the same uh, uh, formatting, the same resolution, the same uh, frame rate, and so on. And I can start my render, and off I go. This is fine if you just have three or four or six, but I recently had a job where I had over a hundred of these to do. And I really didn't want to do it this way. First of all, because it's time consuming, and secondly, because it's error prone. And, and the third problem is that you have to enter these file names manually each time. So the file names don't persist anywhere convenient. The names of these markers are kind of meaningless. They're not picked up at all by this uh, panel up here. So you have to type them all in again which doesn't really make much sense if you have, say, 130 of them. Uh, so I thought, okay, what I want is a better, a better way to go. And it turns out that that's not really rocket science, so let me explain the smarter way. And this requires that you have some familiarity with your operating system, how to use command line tools, and so on. If not, this isn't really the place to learn the very basics, but I do encourage you to uh, learn what you need to follow along with this tutorial. Now, for this to work, we need two tools. The first is the programming language Python. Uh, Python is open source. It's cross-platform. It's easy to use. It's very powerful. It's, it's been established for a good long time now. I've been using it um, since it was sort of a babe in the woods. <laughs> um, now, your operating system might already have Python installed, but it might have an old version. Be sure you have Python 3. Um, the newest version is actually 3.9.5, but so long as you have 3.6 or higher, my code will run just fine. So if you already have an older version of Python on your system, you, you should just download and install um, the, the latest version. And it can run alongside older versions of Python, so you're not going to ruin any system functions by doing that. Python's a fantastic tool for both beginners and experts, and I use it regularly to automate system tasks, since I find it easier than using command line um, prompts and scripts and that kind of thing. Okay, the second tool you need is the very wonderful FFmpeg. This also is a command line tool. You can see that here's a sample command that you would type in uh, to convert a simple video file. But I must say the syntax of this is notoriously difficult. And for that reason, 
I am pairing it with Python. So the basic method I'm using is to use Python, which is a lot more powerful and easy to comprehend, as a wrapper around FFmpeg in order to make it a lot easier to use. That way we combine the power of this video library with the ease of use of Python code. So I'll show you the code in a little bit, but first I will go through the workflow for solving our problem. Okay, so here we are back with our same uh, project, our same timeline in Resolve. Now, for this method to work, you do need to mark all of the edit points with markers, of course. Uh, you can have one clip or many clips here. It really doesn't matter what's going on on the timeline. The important thing is that you have consistent markers uh, that will indicate how you want to split up this file. And the uh, important thing is that they each are named. I believe each of these are. This one's called Red Circle. This one's Amoeba. This one's Cell. This one's Flytrap. And there's one at the end that just says End. So mark up, uh, put your markers in place. Of course, you just do that by tapping M. And then you can immediately tap M again to bring up this little dialog so you can enter a name. Uh, if you already have a marker in place, you can simply move your playhead to that and then shift M will bring up this dialogue to edit. Once you have done this, then you can uh, go to the deliver page and you can render the entire thing as one file. I'm going to name it input because it's going to be the input to a process in a moment. So that's the first thing you do, is render your entire file. Uh, the second thing that you do is if you go to the media workspace and find your timeline, uh, we want to export a, a list of those markers. And this is called an edit decision list or an EDL. It's a, an industry standard way of sharing uh, not just marker information, but all sorts of information about what we have done to our clips. So if you right click on your timeline, timelines, export, and you go down to here, timeline markers to EDL. That is what we want. I mean, there's lots of different formats <laughs> for different purposes, but be sure to choose this one. And then you can save it, you know, to your desktop or wherever, give it a nice name. And that is your work done in Resolve. So it's actually very simple. There's very little to do in here that would be different from your normal workflow. Now I have a folder that I have arranged with all of the material in it. So I've got my MOV file, my rendered file called input. I've got the edit decision list, which I've also called input. And I have the Python program that I'm going to run, and that is something which I'll provide for you. I've also created an empty folder called result, where all of the little clips will be put once we go through this. Right, so let me just take this uh, EDL and have a look at it in here. This is what um, an EDL file looks like. It's got a couple of lines at the top that just describe it. And then it's got a sequence of these records. Um, each record, in this case, is two lines long with a blank space in between. And it's got a whole bunch of information, including the name of the marker and the start time of each. So what, um, what we need to do is parse this to get the important information out in order to cut up our input file into these parts. Okay, so now, I'm going to take a quick look at the code for those of you who are interested. Um, if not, you can just skip to after this section. Uh, there's a rather descriptive comment at the top that goes through everything that you need to know. And then let me just fold these four main parts down so that you can see sort of the global view. Now, if you're used to Python code, you're going to be, of course, at home here. If you're not, it's not that different from JavaScript or other programming languages. There are a few distinct differences. However, it has a lot less syntax to worry about. There are no semicolons at the end of the lines. There are no parentheses. Instead, uh, your indentation defines the scope that your code is operating in. And in this case, there are four of these that I have, that I have defined. 
to make the code as uh, structured as possible. And I'm using, uh, well, the program I'm using to edit this is the Atom editor, which is a, a free um, code editor, but of course you can use whatever text editor you like, and quite a lot of them, pretty well all of them these days have uh, customizations, syntax highlighting, and grammar correction, and so on for Python. So just use the tool that you wish to use. But be sure you are using a plain text editor, which is to say an editor that will not put extra codes in the files when you're saving them. You don't want to be using a word processor or any sort of uh, application like that. Okay, to start with, I have a class called segment, which is quite simple. It just defines the three main properties of each video segment, namely the start time, the stop time, and the name that we get from the marker. It also defines the ffmpeg command line code with uh, blanks or these, these braces indicate where we're going to substitute in variable information. This is pretty well the extent of this class. The only thing that's really going on here is a, a time conversion because the, the format that comes in from the EDL file and the format that FFmpeg wants to see are different. So we need to convert from this frame format to a number of uh, decimal points per second. So 13 frames is 0.54 seconds at our frame rate. That's really the only trick that's going on here. So a collection then is our second class, and it is a list of these segments for convenience. And in the constructor, it uh, splits one of the input lines into different tokens and then does this work of combining two data lines into one, essentially. So it has to keep track of whether we're on the first line or the second line. So there's a Boolean variable to do that. That's really the only trick that's going on here. Otherwise, um, parsing of strings is very simple and convenient in Python. The second important function that needs to be done is to find out where one of the segment ends, we actually look at the next segment and see where it begins. There is no actual end information in the data. So all we do is loop through our entire collection of segments. And for each segment, we look at the next one to pull the start time in as our new stop time. And when we're done, we can then delete the last entry. I mentioned when we were in Resolve, you do need to mark the end of file. That tells us the end of the previous section. But that marker itself, once it's done its job, can just be discarded. Okay, so that's what collection does. So the, the main code then is as simple as this. It reads in our EDL file. It gets rid of empty lines. Then it gives the remainder of the content over to collection. We fix the segments and then we run the command associated with each. And that basically is our top level process. So the only code here you actually need to be acquainted with is in the configuration class because this is where the input files are specified, both the EDL and the video file. The output folder you can specify here. And we do need to know the frame rate of the input video files, video file, I should say, so that we can uh, correctly make that, um, do that conversion to the timestamp. And that's basically it. So even if you're not gonna touch this code, you do need to come in here open this up in a plain text editor and make sure that these correspond to your video file. Okay, so to run the Python code, then you can of course use the built-in uh, function of your IDE, but I'm actually gonna close this up and instead just do this from the command line. So I'm going to run this Python program using the um, PowerShell. You can use any terminal or command line program you have on your operating system. And all you need to do is type Python. Um, and then the name of the program. In this case, we proceed it with dot backslash so that it knows it's in the current folder. And if you do this, 
this will go through each of the segments, create the files that quickly. Okay, this is a very quick process because there is no transcoding taking place. The FFmpeg command line that I'm using passes the video streams and the audio streams as it finds them. And all it does is find um, the cut points for you. Now there's a chance these won't be frame accurate. It depends on your file format. It depends on where you have keyframes. That is one thing. If you want exact frame accurate cuts, it's actually a much more complicated process that I haven't implemented uh, for the purpose of simplicity. But of course, what you can do in case any of them are significantly incorrect is, is do that sort of trimming after the fact as well. But this, this should be good for 95% for of cases. And you, and you can see, I mean, it's, it's very quick. And if we look in our results folder, we now have amoeba, cell, fly trap, red circle as individual MOV files. So that's all there is to it. You can grab the Python code from GitHub. You can follow this simple workflow. And I hope that this helps all of you out there who have tried to slice and dice your video files efficiently. My name is Robin. Thanks for watching.